All right, so if you guys were here last week, we talked about moving a dart, right? A bus dart? Mm -hmm. Moving it so that it was uh, pointing at the apex and it was about an inch away from the apex where the dart finishes. So Janet was using our everybody's pattern to show you that. Um, an example on our very own Brenda here in the office. So it's a real life example. Um, you can always go back and watch our videos. They're housed right on our Facebook page under videos. They should be in order with the newest first. So if you're looking for something. We didn't do it on Brenda. We did it on Brenda's slow. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. It was a real life example from. A oh, real life yeah. example. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We have a hard time getting Brenda on camera. We're going to try again today, but we'll see. What? She doesn't know that. Yeah, she knows. I teased her with it. She's just... She wants to be uh, Wilson. The, the opposite of Wilson. The opposite of Wilson. The unknown seamstress with the paper bag on her head or something. I don't know. I don't know why. Oh, we could have Emmett draw her a face on a bag. Oh, yeah. Would He's... that be better, Brenda? What? If Emmett drew a face on a bag for you? Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> uh, all right, so but that's what we talked about last week. If you want to take a look at that or anything else from the past, they're all on our Facebook page. And also, if you were with us last week, you'll know that, as usual, we got a little off topic, which is perfectly fine. It's sometimes where your best ideas or information come from. And Cassie had asked us about hemming pants. And we talked a little bit about how um, you can be a very accomplished seamstress and have something in missing from your education or something you're scared to do, even though it seems like an easier type of... You've either avoided it yeah. or you've just never, never been presented with the experience, yes. which Cassie, she showed us this elaborate uh, Renaissance period look like costume or some type Victorian maybe, a costume that she made for next Halloween so she's even in ahead, but fabulous work. And yet she still um, feels like she'd like some extra help with the exact proper way to hem a pair of trousers. Especially making that first cut. Yes, that <laughs> first cut is the is the deepest. <laughs> you can really... The scariest. It is the scariest. So, um, yeah, but we'll talk well, about especially, that especially, and we're going to talk about that, especially because she's doing it for somebody else. Right, that makes it... <laughs> always puts that extra pressure on for you because there's kind of no going back. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jessica knows because she's done it. I've seen her do it. A favor for a friend. Oh, sure, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Well, and I did have <laughs> Emmett's jeans that one time. I'm not so ridiculous that I've hemmed all his pants, but, like, at one, I did do his jeans for uh, for photos okay. only. Otherwise, I just roll them up because... <laughs> well, they're going to grow into let's, them. Yeah. Well, he, no, his legs... No. Oh, yeah, he has that <laughs> little inseam. Yeah, he has uh, my, my family's inseam. Yes. His short legs. Even he, I mean, he's a little bit on the shorter side, but he you don't really notice until you go to put a pair of pants on him <laughs> that his inseam is on the short side. So I probably should phone up on this lesson for the, for the future. <laughs> yes. Although I'm very glad that joggers are in style. Yes. Well, it's very helpful. Sometimes as adults, maybe not with kids, but with adults. At somebody five foot one, I have to shorten them. I have to shorten them. Yeah, so, or else you have like kind of they're too baggy, like balloon. Yeah, the whole there's too much, yeah. and it balloons over the top of the ribbing on the ankle. So it, it you have just, your own look. You no, you look like you're wearing somebody else's pants. <laughs> so, but I have tips on that one too today. So okay. we're so gonna that's cover that. What we're getting at. Um. We did give a little bit um, 
of help last week, but Janet uh, has been thinking about it and she put together a more comprehensive lesson and tips for you guys to learn about. So if you have any questions. Um, yeah. Well, and now, and Cassie piped in and now I know why she really hasn't done it before. She can't find pants long enough. It's uh, her issue. So she's see? never had to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we can cut off um, when we have our pants. And we'll send, send you the extra. Send it to you. <laughs> Just add it. That's totally legit. I know. Um, I know a lot of people back in the day that would face their hemp. So if you're really tall and you find these beautiful pants, um, sometimes you can let the hem out. So let's say it had a two inch hem and you need that extra inch or inch and a half you can find another piece of fabric, either a lightweight, so that it doesn't add bulk to the hem. Depends on the kind of pants. But anyways, you can always face that hem and gain another inch, inch and a half uh, to make those pants long enough. So that's, that's an idea sometimes because you find those beautiful. It's just like me. I'm too short and you find something and it's perfect if it will only fit you. <laughs> if it will only fit you. I mean, I feel like that's just everything. <laughs> it's perfect if it only fit me. <laughs> and that's why we sew. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's why exactly. so many of us sew. But sometimes you want to uh, do some kind of alterations to ready-to-wear, which one of them would be hemming. Because I don't know anybody that makes absolutely everything they wear. We just don't do that in this day and age. And part of the reason is, you know, for t-shirts and jeans and the real casual, Pajamas. your everyday wear. Now, I make my own t-shirts, but I make, they're not for going out in the garden. You right. Know? So for gardening clothes and, and just uh, work clothes and there's other things that you need to uh, supplement your wardrobe with that it isn't worth putting the effort into most of the time. Yeah. Although there are people who love to make jeans, but I don't think I want to do that. Make a jeans jacket, but I don't know if I want to make a pair of jeans. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but lots of people, I mean, Angie has... Oh, Angie does beautiful work. She does beautiful work, work on her mm -hmm. jeans, and lots of people follow her for that, but... Just not our thing. We wear them, but we don't make them. We make a lot of great stuff. But I do, I mean, maybe it's not a bad idea because I do have a hard time. If they would be perfect, if only they fit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so are we ready? Are we ready? Shh. Oh, me? I'm ready. I think everybody else should be ready. Okay. So, Janet's going to go over there. You want to um, shut that door, though? All right. And I'll move the camera around and she'll get started. So if you guys have any questions along the way, um, shout them out. And when we get to a point, I can ask Janet about it while well, she's teaching us. Yeah, so Joanne, we do not do jeans. That's what we were just saying. Um, but Angela Wolf. Um, she makes jeans, she does a beautiful job, and I know she has a lot of people who follow her doing that. So she would be a good person to look for if you're interested in, um, in that. Uh, okay. Let me change it over here. Oh, Mary Smith says, I make jeans, shirts, bras, and panties. I have knitted socks, but they don't wear well. Well, maybe Janet could tell you a little bit about that i love knitting socks she went on a whole knitted sock thing for a while i still have those they yeah. wear very well well mary were you using wool because that's what i use to knit my socks is the wool and it lasts for an awful long time unless she just loved her socks so much she uh -oh. wore them i'm stuck warm sorry guys too much or something all right here's janet there's the back of janet got the mirror there see the side of janet <laughs> um yes angela wolf 
and Angela Wolf Patterns, I think, is the name I of think, her company. Did she do a jeans class on Craftsy? She might have done a jeans cr class on Craftsy. Check that out. And, yep, Janice, uh, jean jacket, we have a great pattern for that, for like a casual, um, if you're interested. Okay, here we are. What do you, what do you have to show us about hemming? All right, so starting with first things first, that is um, determining how you want to, uh, how the person want, wears their pants. So when you get, if you're not used to fitting other people, one thing, and I noticed Cassie said whoever she's hemming for already folded up their pants and pinned it where they wanted it. That scares me like crazy because they pinned it up. If they made a mistake, it becomes my mistake when I hem it and they put them on and they're too short or too long. So I would rather do all of the pin t pinning and making the notes for the alterations myself. But sometimes that's just not possible. Then you want a little disclaimer <laughs> before you stitch it. But anyway, um, then you want the person to put the pants on the way they're going to wear them. And the reason I say that is, is because whenever I've seen men being fitted in a tailor shop, They'll grab their pants and they'll pull them up and it'll get them on and then the hem will get measured. But really, when they're wearing their pants, they usually lower that front uh, so that it's underneath their uh, belly. And so, especially a man of any girth, well, that's the way they'll wear their pants. Well, that lowers the pants and it lowers the front as well as the back a little bit. And then you have this pool of fabric at the ankle. So make sure that they put those pants on. They're where they're most comfortable. They sit down, stand up a couple of times. Then you're ready to hem the pants. So they'll always look nice. Okay, so that's the first step. Secondly, when you have them, generally, you will, if you have the wherewithal for them to stand on a little platform, that will help you just help your back. Actually. So that's not just a movies thing. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> just because pants, having pants, you're all you're only a couple inches off the floor. So and it's harder to see what you're doing too, because you want to stand back after you've pinned them. So you're up and down and standing back and everything. You want to pin both legs. The reason is is because most people have a slight difference left to right. But some people have a great dis difference. So you want to confirm that they're, you know, that they're going to either be symmetrical or that maybe one needs to be a, bit, a little bit longer. And you'll know that by pinning them. Um, another thing to note is the shoes that they're wearing with these pants. Are these the style and shoes that they're going to wear with these pants? Because some shoes have platforms, some have heels. If it's a woman, she may be wearing them with very high heels. And then in that case, you have to consider that the hem in the front will break at the top of the foot. And I'm going to explain that in a minute with some pictures. But the back, you want it from the side view, it's going to go down and be a little bit longer in the center back than it is in the center front. But when you put them on with heels, it... It just sits on your foot really nice. Otherwise, if it's up too high, that heel is just kind of an eyesore and it, and it makes it look like maybe your pants are too short. So take into consideration if you have to do that uh, slight angle toward the back. But you'll pin them up. Now, when you pin them up, some people will pin them up right sides together. That means fold them up outside and pin them along. And that's perfectly fine. And some people will fold them in and it'll be wrong sides together and they'll pin them up. Some of that depends on the fabric. If it's a heavy denim, it's harder to fold. Um, some of it will just depend on what works best for you. So either way, you know where that fold line is supposed to be. 
So you've, here's a bottom of a pant leg, let's say. So you know exactly, we folded these up, we know exactly where that fold line is. That's our first step in determining how much to cut off, okay, is that fold line. So um, you're going to get that fold line and you're going to, once you've got it confirmed, then you're going to press it. So you're going to press the fold line all the way around both pant legs. But before you do that, I want to talk about the break. So for the first example, this one I think is just a perfect example of a well-hemmed pair of pants. Just grabbed it off the internet. and But you can see this is the break. Oh, hold on. i got a focus issue. There okay. you go. So see how it, it hits the top of his foot? And there's a slight little fold, or, and that's what they're calling is the break. Now, what I see too often, particularly on younger people that aren't used to tailored clothing, and when I say tailored clothing, I mean just things that are altered to fit properly and hang nice, they will have like two or three inches of ripples all up and down right in this area of their jeans or their pants because either they don't know how to hem them or they think that looks good. I don't know why I don't stop them on the street and ask them why they have three inches of extra fabric at the bottom of their pants and it just ripples like that. But I've even seen ads that do that with pants and I don't know. They don't, again, want to take the time to have the tailor come in and, uh, and alter the pants for the model or they just don't care. I don't know. But for me... The break is the best. Now, you got focus here. What if I do this? Yeah. I mean, it was in focus, and then it just wasn't. So that's good. All yeah. right. So this is a nicely hemmed pair of pants. And when this person walks, it's not going to be like their ankles are sticking out. Uh, you're not going to, when they sit down, they're not going to be so short. They're coming up above their socks. Um, so this is an average pair of trousers. Now, today's style, trousers are much narrower. So you still need that little bit of break. And you can see it on both of these, a little bit of a break. and But you're not going to get the pants to come down over the shoe or the ankle. You're going to just get it right to the top of the shoe because they're so narrow. But this is the style, not only in skinny jeans, but in men's suits. If you've watched any current Hollywood movies or fashion shows, you're going to see the suits are pretty much cut more like European. So the men's suits are much closer fitting, and including the pants. And they don't care if their ankles show because they don't wear socks and they kind of like that look. It's the look of the day. Um, so then we come to the jogger style or the athletic pants that are very narrow at the ankle. And there's a little different tip in uh, cutting the hem for these than there is in a straight leg trouser. So that's going to be another thing I'll cover in a minute and show you how to adjust for that. Okay. You, you have a still focusing issue? Only on the pictures, but... It focused enough to see what it is. All right. Well, as long as I'm in focus. Um, You're in focus, but are you focused? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and we don't know. All right. So on the trouser, uh, da, 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 da. how much would be a break in inches, Chantel is asking. It's really not measured in inches. It's by the look, Chantel. So if you look at that picture again and you see that's what you're going for it's a slight break it's a little bit longer than where's my other one than this guy but he's got the skinny pants his can't go any longer so this is slightly longer and you just want it to have that little break right there so would you get a good idea when you pin it up to see yeah that? when you okay. pin it up you'll see Especially in a trouser, because it's a softer fabric. We're not working with jeans here. But jeans should have a little break, too. If you went to a high-end tailor, he would hem your jeans, whatever, 
with a little bit of break in that so that your pants always look the proper length when you were walking or sitting. So it's taking into consideration uh, the wearing of the garment as well as just standing still. Okay, so Claudia, she talked a little bit about this. She's asking, is the break for styling or is there a reason for it? Okay, so I just covered it. Yeah, it's styling um, because it just looks like a really nice quality pair of pants, but it's also the reason of the style is so that you're you always look good. You're walking, your pants are covering your they're not riding up, they're and not showing riding your up. Socks exactly. Or yeah. Leg hair when you sit down. You've all everybody has been somewhere where you can tell what happened. Somebody got their pants hemmed too short or they bought them too short and they sit down. Like it looks fine standing up and then they sit down and you see their leg hair is like coming up way too high. <laughs> and there can be other reasons for that, like not enough ease yeah. elsewhere. And so when you sit down, your body's pulling the pants up. It does not look comfortable. No. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's an awkward look. So to avoid the awkward look <laughs> is another good reason. So let's go through, we'll go through hemming the trousers first. And then I'll go through the athletic, very tightly tapered pants. So for either one of the first two, which are the dress pants, we're going to find that fold line. And we're going to fold up on that. So let's say that we fold it up a hem, and now I've got six inches of fabric. Well, we don't want a six inch hem, and no, we're not going to double fold it for a three inch hem. Generally in a trouser, about a two inch hem, and you can go... Still focusing issues? Yes. Remember we had a focus issue with that orange jacket that one time? Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. And I uh, picked orange. Well. So, once you find that fold line, you're uh, going to measure from the fold line to the edge of the hem. And again, if it is six inches and you want a two-inch hem, you're going to cut four inches off. Now that's specifically for a trouser. So remember to do the math twice. It's the old measure twice, cut once. So once I know where my fold line is, I know I want at least two inches, or I want two inches of a hem for this pair of pants. And again, it could be an inch and a half, it could be two and a quarter, but you're not going to go much beyond that. You want a substantial hem in a trouser because it's a drapier fabric and you want it to hang nice and the hem will give it a little bit of weight. So, again, we've measured, We let's say we fold it up six inches, but we only want a two inch hem, so we're cutting off four. Okay, once we've done that, we're going to finish that edge because on a trouser, we don't fold under a quarter inch and stitch that down. First of all, you don't top stitch a trouser. Uh, you want it to be invisible. And you don't want that ridge that this is going to cause on the other side. So to blind hem, we want that pressed up really nice. And we want the raw edge finished somehow. All right. Then, to get ready to hem it, we're going to fold it one more time. And this is a temporary fold that I wonder all right you can see from here this is the inside of the pant let's see this is the outside of the pant and I folded the hem up so that when I stitch on the inside remember we always stitch on the inside of a circle okay we're going to hem it along that folded edge so we want this folded just beyond the serging. Why don't you unfold, repeat. I have it. Okay, so here's the outside of my pant. Let me put this. This is the right side. Okay, so here's the right side of my pant. I've already trimmed my hem now. So that I have like a two inch hem here. And now, in order to use the blind hem stitch on the sewing machine, I have to make a temporary fold, which is folding the fabric. Let me do it from the wrong side. 
Okay, I'm on the wrong side now. Okay, I'm on the wrong side. And now I just want to fold right along that surging. So this is the wrong side again. And there is our surging, and here is our second fold. Is everybody following that? I know it can be a little uh, deceptive. So I'm on the inside of the pant right now, on the wrong side, and my hem was folded up, and all I did was fold it back. And then I pressed it so it would be nice and even and neat right along the very inside edge of that surgery. Put your uh, finger let's just show that it's folded there. That's the folded right, edge. Right like this. Like, yeah, okay. To show like that. So that's yeah. the folded edge. But you want to press it because you don't want any slack between these folds. So you want that pressed and laying nice and flat. Okay, good. So now, the next thing is to find this this stitch on your sewing machine. This is a blind hem stitch. It stitches, I think, three stitches and then it pops over and gets one stitch into the pant leg. So in other words, and I, now this one they're going to need to see just mm -hmm. So, how can they see that? Um, they can, but why don't you hold it up because they get a little bit better angle? Yep, just like that is fine. Uh, whoops. Now, of course, I've used contrasting thread so you can see it. Yep. Okay, so this is the, the straight stitching goes along here, and then it pops up and grabs one bite, one tiny little stitch, and you can adjust it so you want to do a practice like I did so that you're only grabbing that you little bite. Down, okay, so in my case, I have a machine that has this particular foot, and this is the foot that you use for that machine to do a blind hem. And what's really nice about it is, is that if I ride that edge of the foot, this big, fat, the fat side of that foot, right along that fold, it's absolutely perfect so I don't have to guess and it will take the same bite every time now I'm going to turn this over and show you what it looks like from the right side and of course you can see those tiny little bites it took but if this was the same color as the fabric you will never see those so again you have to play with it because on your machine you'll be able to adjust the width the little bites are apart and you'll also be able to adjust how far over it will come how big of a bite into this fold it's going to take but this foot is genius because if I just run that fat sided uh, of the foot so that it lays right against the edge in that crease there I get the exact same bite every time on the right side and again, if this is matchy thread, where in this case, this is a place where getting as close as you possibly can to matching the thread is very important. And then these things just disappear. Question? Is that also why when your hem starts to come out of your dress pants, it happens very quickly? Usually, yeah, that's not why, because in this one it won't, but in the industry and at a dry cleaners or wherever, they have a, an industrial blind hem machine, and it is made like sugar sacks. It's called a chain stitch. So once one thread pulls, it just completely unravels. That's not what you get on your home straight stitch or zigzag machine. It's not doing a chain stitch, so it's not likely to come out like that. And make sure you keep your stitches, you know, um, not too long so that they stay in place, um, but it should be fine. Okay, any other questions about hemming trousers? 
Um, is there something that you use to make sure that you're even all the way around? Well, my hem is even. When you're like folding them up or cutting right. them. So when I fold this hem up, the first hem, the first, I know, the first fold, I'm going to be at the sewing machine. And of course, I have to press on the inside. You see, you don't want to try to turn this right si or wrong side out and press it. I want to press like this and then I turn and I press. And I use this. Now, there's lots of ways to measure a hem, but this, I love these little ones and it's two inches. And then I come down another two inches and I press between those two. And I just move my way around. Okay. Yeah, it's not cumbersome to have a bit. Right. But then when I do this one, because I know this is good and it's straight and even, then all I have to do is fold so that it's hitting that inside edge of that surgery. And if I press that so that's that way all the way along, then my hem is going to be nice and straight and even. The key is, again, you don't want any slop in between those folds. So you got you want to use your iron to press it down nice and flat so that you know you haven't. The reason is is okay, if we slipped, if we slipped and this got kind of pulled down like that, now our hem is going to be nasty looking cuz it's going to be stitched and there's going to be all this extra fabric in there. It's not flat anymore. So we that's why we want to press it. And just line it right up with that surging. Okay, few questions, and okay. I think you have something to, for this last one. Um, Mary is asking, how do you knot the ends? Not the, oh, how, well, Mary, you're on this flat surface of the surging. And so you can start out and back up because the first few stitches are straight stitches and they'll stay right on this little edge here. So they're not going to show. So you can stop and back up and go forward and you'll be fine. And you can do the same thing at the other end. You just got to watch where you're going to have straight stitches and not that stitch that I call the bite. So as long as you're at right after a bite... Then you could go forward two stitches and come back two stitches and you're sealed. And it's all on this uh, edge here, not on the trouser part that's going to be seen by the public. And different Mary. Uh, what about going over the seams? That is where I have trouble. Well, um, that depends on your machine. One thing I um, would like to do, like in this instance... If I am sewing in this direction, I would rather that this would be pressed the other way so that it wasn't um, fighting me. So I would make sure when I press this hem up in whatever direction I was going, that seam is going this way so it doesn't Oops, flip sorry. up on me. Okay, so I'm going to stitch along and then it'll encourage that to lay down. However, if your machine is balking at this kind of thickness of a hem, uh, that's too bad. Um, I've worked with machines like that before, and I don't own those machines anymore because they certainly should be able to go over across seams. So if your machine's balking there, there could be a couple of adjustments you could put uh, use. On your machine and that would be the pressure of the presser foot which is usually right straight up on the top of the housing there's usually some kind of lever or a knob or something that will lighten up the pressure so that it can go over that so that's a consideration and when you do your little sample if that's a problem then do one with a seam or two seams in it so that you can accomplish and feel comfortable with that aspect. Figure out what you have to do to get past those seams. And um, it could be stitch length a little bit. It could be, a, but that pressure is probably it. All right, Cassie. Um, they, so Cassie's doing this for somebody else. And she did say, just so you know, that the 
a seamstress did fold them for her. Okay. And um, they folded the pants one and three quarters inches. So how much should I cut off half of that measurement? If it's a, if she's got one and three quarters inch hem and it's a trouser, like a dress trouser, that's a perfect hem. You don't need to cut anything off. You want Cassie between one and a half to two inches of a hem. Now that's my personal standard. You can check with uh, tailors. And you know what? I'd say this, I can't say it often enough, compared to ready to wear. You probably have a pair of dress slacks or something similar in your closet. And if you don't, there's racks of them down at Macy's or whatever store that you have local. So you can get a little tip on how um, it might be best mm -hmm. done. But I'd say you're fine with one and three quarter inch hem. Does that help, Kathy? To relieve your cutting anxiety? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to cut. Yeah. Uh, Joanne is asking, is the blind stitch machine chain stitch just for speed? Oh, I think she's talking about how you said that they did it. In, in the industry? Yeah. Um, you know what? I don't know if that is why um, they are like that. So I can't answer that question. It might be, but I industrial machines are made to go fast no matter what kind of stitch they do. So I well imagine they could do the same stitch um, very fast as well. But the chain stitch is apparently more efficient and for what reason I'm not sure. Okay. And then Connie's asking is that surged with three or four thread? This one I surged with four because I was too lazy to take the fourth one out because I had to do something else real quick. Um, but yeah. it should have been three. It should have been three. Um, okay. Sha uh, Four doesn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. Sean asked the same question, but she also said, don't forget the clapper. That's right. That's right. I now, I would clap. Let me show you because somebody said, what's a clapper? I would clap this permanent crease right here. I'm not sure I'd clap this one. You want to be careful because you don't want a permanent crease here because this crease is just for hemming and when you fold these pants back out this pant hem out you want that crease gone so you're going to press that out all right carissa we have um quite a few videos on the clapper um so if you want more in depth go back and look at it but yeah. janet can show you briefly here. yeah at the very end of all of our videos that are on the video page of the website right down at the bottom one of the last two or three down there is the pressing tools video so when you press with a good hot steam iron you press your hem you take the iron away and you put the clapper down and put some pressure for just a few seconds and then you take it away this press will right. be significantly flatter than it would be if you just use the iron and I'll explain the science of that. It is because when fabric is heated with steam and pressure, um, it will, the fibers will just lay down. But when it cools and nothing is inhibiting it, it'll pop right back up again. So the fold won't be quite as flat in a few minutes. However, when you use a hardwood clapper like this, you are taking the heat and the steam out, the moisture out of the fabric while pressing down, keeping it flat. So now it's not going to pop back up because it was cooled and forced to stay flat while it was cooled and the moisture was taken out. So that's the scientific reason it works. All right. And then I think you might have something for us on this, but Claudia um, has a comment question. It might in lead you right into okay. it. <laughs> uh, she said, this weekend I hemmed my boyfriend's pants. I found that the taper in the pants caused the hem to not be perfect. Slight gathering and it was only a one and a half inch hem. Yes. And I'm going to show you exactly why. And Ed, this is for you too, so I hope you're watching because Ed asked this question as well today about when you go to fold up the hem and now you have more fabric then you have area to put it in, or you have more area than you have fabric. Okay, so 
when you have a hem, you have a tapered pant leg like this. And originally it had a one inch hem in it, but it's too long for you. That's me. So this is my new fold line, this red line right here. So I put it on myself or my client and I fold up that on that line. Get that folded. Of course, I'm doing this in paper, but when you're altering paper patterns, this is the perfect way to do it too. So now this is my fold line, and I know I want a one inch hem. You never want a very wide hem on a narrowly tapered pant. So usually it's about an inch or less. Sometimes it's an inch, and then it's double uh, folded, so it ends up being only a half inch hem. And again, take your cue, if you're, if you're hemming ready to wear, then take your cue from the way it was hemmed in the first place, unless you don't like it. And then you do whatever you want. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to fold it up. And here's where the problem happens. When I fold up my hem, I don't have enough fabric here here to fit here and this is just half of the pant leg so the other half is going to do the same thing so I'm missing about a quarter on each side so I actually am missing a full inch of fabric to stitch to so uh, what I need to do is get this hemline the new hemline this new fold line the same length as the old fold line the same width as the pants were when they were made. Okay, so the distance around the ankle, the bottom hem of the pants. I want this and this to be the same. So, let me see. All right, so this original hem distance around was six and a half. But it is currently measuring at seven. So there's that half an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that quarter inch off. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mark that quarter inch. Now remember, it depends on your pants. But they're not going to be a, a much bigger uh, difference than that. So then what I want is I this is the hem of my pants and this is the width I want the hem to be now so it'll be just like it was before only shorter and then I just blend that line and I'm doing this in red so you can see what I'm doing and you want to do them similar both sides I blend that line right up there so now to make these pants right this is a going to uh, have to stitch the new side seam so you have to take the side seam in a little bit okay but when you do and you fold the hem up this new line and I just cut on it so you can see what I'm talking about Now, my pant hem fits. You see how it goes out and back in? That's all you have to do is you fold it up. Now it fits. Now it's going to be the right circumference around my ankle. I've got enough fabric that it's going to match perfect when I put my hem in. Okay, so did everybody follow that? Let's see if we have any questions. In the meantime, Joanne asks, is it correct to start hem at the inseam for pressing? As my practice is to press it at the point, at that point, and then measure the inseam of my fabric and compare to my measurements that I took on the body. Is that the best practice? I didn't follow that. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Do you, should you, she's asking the. Should she's you start measuring it? from her inseam. Yeah. Okay. Here's the problem. If you don't try the pants on and pin the hem and you just want to go by the inseam, the only time I do that is I have a particular brand of jeans I buy. 
And so when I buy a new pair, I know what my inseam is, it's 27 inches. And so I could just go ahead and do that. But on a new pair of pants, you want to check because the drape of the fabric, the depth of the crotch, the way they fit you, how snug or loose are they, all have an impact. And maybe that crotch just hangs a half an inch lower than the crotch on the other jean or other pair of pants you own. Then you go with the same inseam, now your pants are too long. So it's always better to double check by pinning the hem up. Even if, who am I talking to again? Uh, Joanne. Joanne. Even if you go ahead and pin them up at, at, at that inseam measurement, but then try them on before you hem them. Just make sure. Try them on, sit down, make sure that they're hanging right and they're comfortable. So I would, st uh, you could start there, but I'd confirm it before I started cutting or stitching. Okay, I love that I didn't lose everybody. Well, here's one, Jess, that where I got, I think I got these two close together. So there's, there's an example of, that's a little, you want me to lay it down? Mm, uh, nope, just, I just want you to stand still. Just stop was, moving, just stop. All right, sorry. Well, I wanted to compare these. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what I was trying to say, is you can adjust it, and this is one of my samples, and I thought this was too close together, so I adjusted it just a little bit to get them a little further apart. But you can't make too many samples. Well, I suppose you could, but don't. But at least make two or three and, and feel really comfortable. Um, and if you're lucky enough to be able to cut off a large chunk, uh, that you, you can use the exact fabric for your sample. All right. And Fred has a, used to work at a tuck shop, and he says they always use the outseam measurement opposed to the inseam. There you go. And you know the reason why? Is because from your waist down to your ankle, that's not going to change. But if your crotch seam is a little higher or a little lower, in particular if he worked in a tuck shop, he's working with men, and their crotch is more flexible. So, again, that inseam could really um, come back to bite him. So the out seam. Thanks, Fred. That's a great, uh, great tip. All right. If you have any more questions, shout them out. We're going to move Janet back to her seat here. I haven't seen you. Well, the dog stole it. He stole mine while we were doing it, too. And then he apparently, I don't know, went for a snack or something and came back and stole yours. And... Uh, whoever asked about the clapper, I don't know that we mentioned we carry those on our website. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yep, we'll just share a seat. And you can blame Brenda. She lets him share. Oh, yeah, blame Brenda. He doesn't share a seat with me. That's because you get him a seat to sit in. Oh. He has his own office chair. Yeah, he he's, just for the record, he doesn't seem thrilled about sharing this seat. <laughs> uh, all right. So that was good information. Lots of um, thank yous for that, especially the tapered leg. Okay, great, yeah. great. Yep. And you know what? Same thing works with sleeve. You get the length that you want, and you want to check that circumference, and then you fold up the hem, as paper patterns best, and then cut it out. You'll have the exact angle and the exact amount of fabric to sew to your hem. Hey, Brenda? Yeah. <laughs> Can you peek in here a minute? I need something over there. <laughs> <laughs> Run by. Now, I just think this is so beautiful, and we love this bamboo uh, fabric print. So I just want to. You can open those now. It's just. Move. Oh. We can get stuck. Don't worry about that. So anyway, this is the five easy tees, and I remember Karen. I think it was Karen. No, Connie. 
It was either Karen <laughs> or Connie called me and asked about lengthening the sleeve on the on the. Well, she was lengthening the sleeve on the Easy V, but Same. we have a tutorial on how to lengthen the sleeve on the Five Easy Ts. Uh, Brenda really likes long sleeves. And she has the same problem with sleeves as other people were having with pants. You can't get them long can't enough. Can't get them long enough. Can't get them long enough. So she did that. But in uh, our newsletter archives on the website, right down at the bottom of those uh, newsletters is the tutorial how to lengthen that sleeve. But that's beautiful. And this is called Blue Summer, this fabric. And it's a bamboo knit. It's comfy. They said <laughs> Thanks, it. Brenda. It looks amazing, the t-shirt and Brenda. Yeah, oh, see? Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> if you guys don't know, if you ever call the office, it, um, and when your package arrives to you much faster than you expected it to, that's Brenda. Brenda does all that. We're like, Brenda, go and home. More. It's time to go home. <laughs> nope, I got to get all those packages out. I'm not going home until I get them all out. She's even been chewed out at the post office sometimes for showing up at the last minute. Lots. <laughs> she got two or three last minute orders. So I'm taking those too. <laughs> All right, so Sophie is saying, I understand changing the pattern to match the circumference, but how do you change the ta taper on ready-made? The same way. I was using the paper as an example, but you're going to do the same thing with the fabric. You're not going to cut that width off the bottom of the hem like I did at first. You want to leave that there. You're going to determine where you want the hem fold, and then you're going to narrow that pant leg in by stitching it up. When you saw me cut, that would be you stitching. Okay, so you stitch that down. But um, uh, you want to um, fold that hem up so that it tapers back out before you do that or right after you do that. Let me think. You're going to cut it. Well, you've got to taper it. You're going to fold it, mark it. Yep, yep. So once you... Uh, well, you, you aren't flat. You're in a circle at mm -hmm. that point. So you will need to make it flat. You'll need to take that seam out and then stitch it back in, tapering it to that whatever distance you need. But you want to take the same amount off of one side as you do the other so you keep the... Cause, well, and the reason is, in your pant, any pant, there's a center front line, and you don't want that to vary. So otherwise your pants will hang a little to one side. <laughs> so you want to keep that center front line right where it is by making the exact same adjustment on both sides. But I would say that you need to open up that inseam and side seam a few inches, fold that fabric up, cut off what you need to cut off, that little quarter inch, and then restitch the seam, and you'll be all set. Oh, Claudia says, thank you for, Brenda, thank you for the super fast delivery of supplies for the May 19th class. So, Claudia will be in our no pins class. Hey, you know what? We have a few seats left, and we can get a kit out really fast. So, if you haven't... Thanks to Brenda. Thanks to Brenda. <laughs> uh, if you haven't taken one of our basic classes for sewing without pins or basting... It will change your life. And I'm not kidding. When it comes to your sewing life, it's definitely going to change it, right? And, uh, I mean, I've had people come up to me at a convention and say, you changed my life. And I say, oh, well, thanks. You know, they say, no, true. you don't understand. You really did. I've seen it. It's true. <laughs> but it's not me. It's the techniques. And uh, so, anyways, we've got one coming up. It's a two-and-a-half-hour class. It's the beginning of our no pins, no basting. We'll be running some uh, additional ones. This is part one. And uh, we do the technique on the same sample, same shape and everything sample that you get in your kit. And then we give you time during the Zoom class to repeat it. And you're right there at your own sewing machine in your own studio with all your own equipment. So it really is a comfort you're in your own comfort zone when you're taking the class, and it will make a huge difference uh, in the rest of your sewing. All right, so we talked about this last time, but um, I don't 
complete I don't remember the perfect answer so and Sherry wants to know so we'll ask again is the May 19th class similar to the craftsy class you did so better so faster I know the short answer but not the long answer. okay the um, I've I've five classes on crafts and four of them start with the word so better so faster however there's a little bit in the Jacket Express class, which is so better, so faster, Garment Industry Secrets. There are a few things in the Advanced Garment Industry Secrets. Um, and then there are some of the things that you might find in the So Better, So Faster Smart Construction. But not any of them have it all. So, similar, but not... Um, not where I can compare apples to apples because this one might have a little bit about a zipper and this one might have a little bit about how to hold the fabric and so on. So if you've taken all of those, then probably you've covered the first half, but you haven't covered the second half. So, um, and I think we're going to do it in three parts now. So if you've taken those, you don't need this class. Just to be clear, um... When she says the first half, she doesn't mean the first half of this class. You mean right. the first half. It's going to be a series. The uh, Islander Sewing Systems 1, no pin, we call it no pins, no basing, no kidding right now. We used to call it industrial shortcuts. Is really can be as long as a two-day class. So we're breaking it up into two-and-a-half-hour segments. And so this is the first time we broke it into that smallest segments in a while. So we're just testing it out so in that class we're going to learn ergonomics we're going to learn about seam allowances which ones go where we're going to uh, learn how to hold the fabric and understand the feed dog we're going to do some crimping and we're going to put a pocket on no pins no basting we're going to put a slot zipper on and, and a waistband so if you've done all of those it's the same thing uh, it's not a new technique. If you've missed any of those, you might want to take the class. Yeah. And then Jillian makes a good point, too. She says, I've taken the craftsy classes, but I'd rather have the live instructions so I can ask questions. So that's, that's what this point. is. And it's also a hands-on. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll sh Janet will talk about it, show you, and then you can do it. And then that way, while you're doing it, if you have any questions, it's live. Um for her to answer. The beauty is, is you get to put all your attention on watching and listening the technique and then repeat it. And then you've got me, I'm not there in the same room with you, but you've got me right there to say, wait a minute, what did you say? How am I supposed to start? Is it, what stitch length or whatever your question might be, I'm right there and Jessica's there. Jessica will be fielding the questions and I'll be teaching the class. Um, oh, who am I looking for here? Marsha. Okay, Marsha, the class is $45, and that includes the kit with everything cut out um, and ready for you to go. So when we get to each thing that we're going to do, the pocket, the zipper, whatever, you have everything ready. You don't have to worry about cutting or interfacing. The zipper's in there. The interfacing's in there. Everything's already cut. You'll have a minimal amount of pressing and fusing to do but everything's already cut and i just put the link right to the class if you wanted to learn a little bit more on that it is a live zoom class um and there's no playback on it so you will have to make sure that you can make it for that time and the beauty is that you're going to have the samples so when you get done with this class um, you'll have the samples to refer to mm -hmm. and we do all of our samples out of Kona cotton just like I was using today for the hem that orange color and you saw me write on it I write on it all the time you can use an ink pen or a marker so you could write your notes and I have people in class all the time write notes and little arrows do this don't do that whatever so um, then you have those to keep um, in an envelope someplace or something so you have them to refer to. Yep. And it's, uh, somebody asked, it's a good question, May 19th at 1 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time. We are in Michigan. 
So Wednesday the 19th at 1 p.m. Eastern, as Janet said, we do have a few spots available, but you want to sign up for that soon because we have to mail you out the kit. If you don't have the kit, you can't take the class. So when we get to the point where we know we can't get that kit out in time, we'll close the class regardless of seat openings because, um, again, if you don't have the kit, you, you can't take the class. Right, right. all right so yeah i think i got to all the questions if we happen to miss any um i apologize it was not intentional if you have any along the way if you go to hem your pants now and have a question you can call us or email um islander sewing at comcast.net is the best way to reach janet at all hours <laughs> We've got two uh, really great kits available right now for shirt making. One is the Islander shirt, and I think there's one in right here, this one. It's like a Tommy Bahama style shirt, as you can see. It's a fabulous uh, shirt, and we made the kit with lawn. So it's a really lovely, lightweight tightly woven cotton, so, or fine, fine fiber woven cotton. So it's got the best drape and it's so cool and comfortable it's a great resort shirt so anyways we have several patterns to choose from uh, as far as fabric patterns and uh that kit's available and also our everybody everybody our everybody shirt do we have one of those up well it's quite we did. covered I think up we took it down. it's covered up but, but we it's... showed those brand new fabrics last week too so mm -hmm. if you wanted to see them on video or you could just go to the website and see yeah. the swatches there but they're um you know, for the Islander shirt, the men's uh, short sleeved, uh, it we got a lot of tropical prints from a designer who designs in Hawaii. So they're they're not really bright bright colors, uh, but they're definitely uh, island appropriate fabrics. And but for the everybody's, we found a really nice line of uh, more delicate and more feminine style lawns. And uh, so there's some beautiful ones. Um, am I right or you're right, Marlene? <laughs> I'm guessing the jackets, because we don't show those very often. Oh, those are fast and fabulous. The fast and fabulous. It's got a welt pocket, and we give you directions on... Let me get out of the way. I'm back. Yeah, both of those are um, fast and fabulous. It has a... Uh, hem that gets longer in the back, so it's an asymmetrical hem. Um, what else does it feature? Oh, the Hong Kong finish. We have um, information that comes with that pattern because it's an unlined jacket. So sometimes you want to do a little something a little special. Um, so we show you how to do a Hong Kong finish on the uh, raw edges of all the seams and the facings. Sorry, I was just replying. And don't forget about the junior uh, oh, for the yeah. Islander. Now, the island, we don't have that kitted, but right. it's available. And the cool thing about the um, Islander shirt kit is that here at Islander Sewing Systems, we hand dye coconut shell buttons to go with our fabrics. So in that kit, you get seven hand dyed coconut shell buttons that coordinate with that fabric. Um, but we also sell the buttons separately. So if you want to buy the child's version of the pattern, and we have three different size ranges, but it goes all the way from, I think, a 2 to a size 20 in children's sizes. And um, you, can, you could buy the buttons to match the fabrics that we have here. Especially if you want to do a father, son, or a grandpa and a grandson. Father's shirt. Day is coming up. It is in June. That's right. It's just the right amount of time. Yeah. Grandpa and the grandkids, or dad and or the grandkids, three. or all of them. Yeah. The great grandkids. <laughs> you never know. Um, all right. So we will be back here next Tuesday with our surprise bags. Some of us Mine have might our... still be in the bag. I'm going to tell you the truth. It is because. No, uh, Emmett made me get it out today. Emmett came in. He goes, I want mom to open the bag. I want to know what's I mean, in I mom's bag. 
And he, yeah, but he didn't. Right. And he's like, I want, I, he was, he was just like he was us. He's like, I want to know what's in the bag. And then she pulled it out and he goes, eh, <laughs> it wasn't that exciting to him. I think you guys would be more excited. You'd be more excited. <laughs> but anyways, I thought that was cute that even he was excited to find out what the surprise was. But anyway, Jessica has not, just now, taken hers out of the bag. Uh, she, like she said, she peeked. I didn't know. I would have figured out what was in it. Yeah. But, um, Yes. Some of us are further along than others. Well, some of us knew it was coming. Brenda. <laughs> Actually, I got I have to tell you it was partially Brenda's idea. Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have to go cuz I have a bag project to work on. Uh, not making a bag, making a mystery something from a bag. If you don't know what we're talking about and uh we're supposed to debut that next week so jessica better go right now <laughs> oh boy all right wish me luck and we'll see you next week for tuesdays at two uh, right here right here at islander sewing systems we're in southeastern michigan and we'd love to see you again next week See you then. Bye. Bye.